أنا شرق عبد المحسن الخلف طالبة في السنة الخامسة اليوم راح أشرح لكم الهايبرثيرويدزم So first of all we are going to talk about the physiology then the definition causes, differential diagnosis, signs and symptoms, investigation, management and finally the complications of hyperthyroidism. So first of all we have the thyroid releasing hormone which is produced by the hypothalamus then it travels down to the adenohypophysis uh, through the portal system to stimulate the formation of the thyroid stimulating hormone. So the thyroid stimulating hormone is formed here by the adenohypophysis. Then it travels down uh, through the portal venous system to, to the cavernous sinus to stimulate iodine uptake and uh, growth of the, th of the thyroid gland. Then the thyro uh, thyroid gland releases T3 and T4 uh, by the follicular cells into the blood. The uh, thyroid stimulating hormone is down regulated by the T3 and T4 and the thyroid releasing hormone is only um, down regulated by the T3. Okay, so we have two types of thyroid hormones. We have the thyroxine which is also called T4 and it consists of 93% of uh, circulating hormone. Uh, and the triiod uh, triiodothyronine, which is T3, it is 7% of the circulating hormone and it is the one that is used by the tissues. So they bind mainly to thyroxine binding globulin by 70% and much less to thyroxine binding prealbumin and albumin by 15%. So for the definitions, we have thyrotoxicosis and hyperthyroidism. So thyrotoxicosis is a clinical state that is resulted from an inappropriately high thyroid hormone action on the tissues and uh, is from any other cause. Hyperthyroidism is thyrotoxicosis due to an appropriately increased synthesis and secretion of the thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland. So it is from the gland itself. Okay, so we have the types, primary, secondary, and tertiary hyper uh, hyperthyroidism. Primary, as we said, is from the gland itself. Secondary is from the pituitary and tertiary is from the hypothalamus. So for the causes, uh, we have Graves' disease, then toxic multinodular goiter, toxic adenoma, thyroiditis, and thyrotoxicosis factitia. Okay, for the symptoms, uh, it is good to remember it in a cephalocaudal way. So weakness, nervousness, heat intolerance, increased sweating, increased appetite, increased bowel frequency, weight loss, and menstrual abnormalities. Uh, for the signs, we have hyperactive reflexes, thyroid brewery, goiter, which is an enlargement of the thyroid gland, uh, sinus tachycardia or atrial fibrillation, we have fine tremors, moist and warm skin, thyroid clubbing, onycholysis and peritibial myxedema, and we also have thinning of the hair. Okay, for the lab results, we have uh, the primary hyperthyroidism. Uh, there will be a problem in the gland itself. So uh, T3 and T4 will be high, and as we said before, they will downregulate the TSH. So since there is a lot of T3 and T4, TS, uh, TSH will be low because they are down-regulating it way too much. And the secondary hypothyroidism, as we said, there is a problem in the pituitary gland, so uh, there will be um, too much release of the thyroid-stimulating hormone, so it will be high. And the thyroid-stimulating uh, hormone, as we said, stimulates the release of T3 and T4, so this will, uh, will also be high. And we also have some diseases that have these anti antibodies, which is the anti-thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies. Uh, then we have the thyroid uptake scan, and it will be high uptake in Graves' disease, toxic multinodular goiter, which will show a patchy um, pattern, and the toxic adenomas, which will be on one side only. And it will, be, uh, it will be low uptake in thyroiditis and iodine-induced hyperthyroidism. Okay, for the treatment, we have um, the goals, which are to normalize the levels of the thyroid-stimulating hormone and re uh, reverse the signs and symptoms. 
So we have beta blockers, propranolol, which is used for tachycardia. And we have the antithyroid medications like methimazole, which is a single dose, 5 to 30 milligram dose daily. And we have the propyl thiouracil, which is a 100 to 300 milligram dose, divided and taken either twice, like 150 grams two times, or three times 100 um, milligram three pills daily. The side effects of propyl thiouracil, it causes rash, vasculitis, liver function test abnormalities, and a granulocytosis. And then we have um, the effects of the uh, propyl thiouracil are seen one to two weeks after the start of therapy. And the antithyroid hormone uh, medications are used to decrease the hormone synthesis. Then we have the radioactive iodine ablation. Uh, the concept of this is to, like to kill the, uh, gland, the gland. So it is absolutely contraindicated in pregnancies. And um, the surgery uh, is an option to remove the gland, but levothyroxine replacement therapy is needed after surgery. So all of the drugs are across the placenta, so it is recommended to do definitive surgery for females who plan to uh, get pregnant. For the differential diagnosis, we have Graves' disease, toxic adenoma, toxic multinodular goiter, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's decorvian, postpartum, silent, drug-induced, radiation-induced thyroiditis, and we have thyrotoxicosis, factitia, and subclinical hypothyroidism is the last one. So for Graves' disease, we have uh, hypothyroidism, which is 90% of the concept of the disease, and ophthalmopathy, 20 to 40%, proptosis, and lid retraction. So the eye will be out. And dermopathy, which is 1 to 4%, uh, the pretibial myxedema. And we have the thyroid acropachy or the thyroid uh, clubbing. It has a special name. So, Graves' disease is believed to have an autoimmune phenomena where, due to circulating thyroid stimulating antibodies. Uh, and the proptosis and lead retraction are resulted from T cell inflammatory infiltration leading to fibroblast uh, growth and edema of the extraocular muscles. So, for the treatment, um, it is the same as hyperthyroidism treatment, and surgery is indicated if there are compressive symptoms on the eye. And then we have toxic adenoma, which is Plummer's disease. It is a functioning, almost always benign, thyroid adenoma. It is a single toxic adenoma that presents in people more than 40 years old, and on physical examination, there is a single nodule present on one side, and there are no eye involvements. Uh, but we could see thyrotoxic symptoms uh, in the patient. The lab results show low thyroid stimulating hormone and high T3 and a slightly high T4. And the thyroid gland, uh, th the thyroid scan shows a hot nodule on only one side and absent on the uh, contralateral side. For the treatment, it is same as Graves' disease. So we have the toxic multinodular goiter. It usually occurs in older patients with long-standing multinodular goiter. And on physical examination, it may be either small or large nodules, and it could be displaced uh, substernally. And as we said before, the radioiodine uptake shows a patchy pattern uptake of multiple nodules. The treatment, same as Graves' disease, but, is, uh, but surgery is the preferred treatment. And then we have thyroiditis, which is an inflammation of the thyroid gland. It could cause increased, decreased, or normal levels of the thyroid hormones in the blood. And the most common one is the Hashimoto's, but it usually causes hypothyroidism. Then we have the uh, decorvians or subacute thyroiditis, which is an acute inflammatory disorder caused by a viral infection. And it resolves around over uh, weeks to months. So since it, uh, it is an infection, some of the signs and symptoms are fever, malaise, neck source, uh, soreness. And on physical examination, it could be tender, the thyroid gland, and there are signs of thyrotoxicosis. The lab results, T3 and T4 will be elevated and the TSH will be low. However, 
as the disease progresses, it uh, switches. So T3 and T4 will be low and TSH will be high. And it shows a very low radio, uh, radio iodine uptake. It could be absent. And the ASR will be high. So the treatment, since it is an infection, the main treatment is the symptomatic treatment. We give acetaminophen, 0.5 grams, four times a day, or NSAIDs um, if the symptoms are disabling, and a glucocorticoid like prednisone may be necessary to reduce the inflammation, 20 mg three times a day for seven to 10 days. And levothyroxine is given in the hypothyroid phase. Then we have the postpartum thyroiditis, which comes in women with type 1 diabetes, positive thyroid antibodies, and the previous history of postpartum thyroiditis. Uh, so it becomes as hyperthyroidism, but after a while it becomes hypothyroidism. Then we have the silent or painless thyroiditis, which is similar to postpartum, but it comes in both men and women. And we have the drug-induced thyroiditis. Uh, which is either caused by amiodarone, uh, which is used for heart rhythm problems, or lithium, which is taken for bipolar uh, disorder, and uh, it gets better after cessation of the drug. Then we have radiation-induced thyroiditis, which is damaged thyroid gland by radiotherapy treatment or radioactive iodine treatment and can lead to both hypo and hyperthyroidism. Then we have the thyrotoxicosis forms. We have three forms. Thyrotoxicosis factitia, which is caused by an ingestion of excessive amounts of thyroxine, since it is believed to um, reduce the weight. And then we have the stroma ovary, which is a teratoma of the ovaries with the thyroid tissue that becomes hyperactive there. So on physical examination, uh, no goiter or eye signs, and the radioiodine uptake will be absent in the neck and present in the pelvis. And we have the thyroid stimulating hormone secreting pituitary adenoma. Uh, the T3 and T4 are elevated, but the TSH is normal or also high. So this will be uh, the secondary hyperthyroidism. And then uh, finally, we have the subclinical hyperthyroidism, which will show normal T3 and T4 and low TSH. For the complications, it could uh, cause the thyroid storm. Um, uh, patients will present with high fever, dehydration, tachycardia, or coma. And they are treated by propranolol, PTU, or uh, propylthiouracil, iodine, and cooling measures to re um, relieve the fever. These are my references. Thank you for listening.